Hey. Welcome to this week's episode of Chatting Shit During Quarantine. So, in 2013, I made a little video about PlayStation 4 and my predictions of what I really wanted the PlayStation 4 to be. During that time, there was no information given. I don't even think there was an image or like any sort of leak. I just really wanted to put my word out there and just say this is exactly what I want for PS4. So I just thought, for a little bit of fun, as we're pretty much in the dark at the minute with the PS5, yes, we've had a, a seminar on how powerful it's gonna be, and yes, we've just seen the controller. We've not actually seen the interface. We've not actually heard about any games. We've not actually uh, heard about the future. We've not actually seen the PS5. And I just thought, hey, this gives a great opportunity to actually put my word out there and be like, okay, this is exactly what I want from it. And this is exactly what is gonna make me happy with it. Just like I did seven years ago. I can't get to grips of what these new generation consoles will offer us. I'm just gonna start off by saying, I'm not really a technophobe. Um, I watched the whole hour seminar on them talking about how powerful it is. I had no idea what they were saying. All I know is that it sounds powerful, so that's great. I'm more looking at um, how much fun I'm going to get from it, how much uh, time I'm going to be on it, and uh, what things they're going to give me and offer me during my time on it. That's more of the direction I'm going to go with this video. Okay, don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, hit that ding -ling button. Let's get straight into it. What I want from the PS5. One, backwards capability. Now, they've actually announced it, so that's amazing. Something that the PS4 never had, and it's something that really upset a lot of people, including me, because I had a lot of games that I loved on the PS3 that I just couldn't play, including this bad boy and this bad boy. I love these games, and I kind of was super upset that I couldn't play them. When they announced that on the PS5, I was blown away. I was so happy. We literally get to play all our favorite games from like 1994. So there is a reason why I put back backwards capability on this list. And that's because they said that most of the games have backwards capability on the PS5. Now that kind of scared me because all the games that I like are games that people don't really care about. Like I'm, I'm, I'm dying to play this game again. I'm dying to play Toy Story 2 and Toy Story Racer again. I love it. These, so, these are so cute, man. I love them games. Also these bad boys. Now, now, now these games I want to play, but I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure people aren't really putting them on their like to playlist. Every game that has ever been branded as a PlayStation game should be played on the PS5. <laughs> Big ask, I know, but how amazing would it be for us to play the 1994 games? Not just the popular ones, all of them. Why not? I've got a whole stash of PS1 games there and PS3 games there. I'm so down to play them all. Next on the list is the controller. So we've seen the images of the controller. It's pretty much exactly the same. It's still got a touchpad for some reason. I have not used this since I first played Infamous when you could do the little swiping. I don't think I've ever used it since then. That's a lie. I used it a day ago to see if it was faster to type my password in Disney Plus and it wasn't. It actually angered me. Why this is on here, I have no idea. It was a cool gimmick from the get-go, but it lasted a few games. What I hate about these controllers more than anything, and no one no one brings it up, it's really weird, the battery life kills me. Like, I have to put this on charge every day for me to get some sort of use out of it. If I literally, like, I can watch a film, right? I can do my thing, watch a film, put it on the, put it on the sofa, go bed, and then in the morning it's dead. I'm just like, I don't, it doesn't have to constantly be on. The battery life on these are awful. I have three, two of them are plugged in constantly because I have a fear of me literally getting on the PlayStation, trying to watch a film and I just can't watch it because the battery's dead. I can't stand these controllers. If you're going to improve something on these controllers, please change the battery life. For the love of God. Number three. PlayStation VR. Now VR at the minute now has really changed games. Like Half-Life has just came out of a VR game. My friend is building a VR virtual world game and it's incredible. The things that you can do in VR is amazing. When I saw they announced this, I was thrilled. I was like, I'm gonna get this day one and I'm never gonna go off it. I, I love the idea of VR and the idea that PlayStation is making a VR headset is going to be amazing. I remember opening the box and I pulled this out because I saw the trailers, I saw everything, but I never saw unboxing videos. Now I got the VR and I opened it. I was like, wow, this is amazing. And then I was like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. And then, and then I had 20 other wires, this big box, thousands of other wires. I just felt like 
I was so limited. I felt like Doc Ock. I just felt like there was things coming out of me everywhere. You're getting on my nerves. I have a knack for that. And I remember looking at the box and I was like, I can't be bothered to set this up. I looked at the instructions and was like, okay, this one goes in here, this one goes in here, this one goes into the box, this one goes into the... I actually never took it out of the box, I think for a month. Then, when I played the first game, I remember, I remember doing something with my arm and it just got trapped by a wire. And I remember the graphics just being awful and I was so disappointed. I have never touched this since. And it's sad because, I mean, yes, it's the first generation. Yes, it's their first time they're doing it. Yes, VR back then, or VR at the minute, it's just not as good as it should be. But now the Oculus Quest is a thing, is everything this should have been, or they should have made like a, a, a version two, or that's what they're doing with the new VR. Now I hope, for the love of God, there is not this, or this. They need their VR version two to be exactly like the Oculus Quest. Maybe that's a big ask, I don't know. That's what they need though. And it, it's literally just been on my shelf for like four years now? Three years? A long time. Number four, storage space. My God. There is nothing that stresses me out. It's the biggest downer ever with these new generation consoles. As soon as I, I've bought a game and I'm so excited, I'm ready and waiting. I put the disc in. My internet's awful, by the way. It says like 90 hours worth of download. But I'm just like, I've got to wait a day to play this game. So this is how I'm seeing this. Quarantine's here, we've got to stay inside. PlayStation Plus has just generously given this Uncharted 4, which is such an amazing game. We've just got it free. So I'm just like, yeah, I'm just gonna download it and play it. I remember there's a trophy where it's like, you have to complete it within six hours. And I was like, I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do that tonight. I'm just gonna have fun with it. Downloaded it. It said I had to wait, I think it was like 17 hours to download an update. I was just like, Interior Crocodile Alligator. I drive a Chevrolet movie theater. Interior Crocodile Alligator. Big disappointment. I hate that. I can't stand it. So I'm thinking, like, maybe cloud storage? Would that be a thing? I'm just trying to think of ideas whether to have, like, how can you play unlimited games on a console? Because memory is super expensive. What if they just open up a cloud, cloud service, which would just allow us to just have a little play? I just don't, I don't know. Number five, interface. The one thing we stare at 50% of the time is the user interface on the PS4. I just don't feel like it's as good as the PS3. For, for starters, storage, music files, videos. You couldn't put your own videos on there. You could put your own music on there. What I loved on the PS3, which was amazing, is that you could listen to your own music while playing the game and it used to go in the background of your game. That was amazing. You had your own pictures, you could have your own wallpaper. What would be really cool, and it's something Steam does, is where when you click on a game or your friend's games, you could see how long you've been playing it. I swear we had it on the PS4. I was trying to look for it the other day. I was just like, we don't have it. That's so weird. I just remembered it was just a Steam thing, which is really weird because like what a simple thing to have, but so effective in the same right because you can just see what your favorite game is and you could be like, I should stop playing that because I have wasted 20 years of my life. Uh, this is something that could uh, be thrown in pretty easily. Number six, why does my PS4 sound like a jet engine? Imagine just trying to play a game, really getting involved with the story, and that bad boy is just going on. Like, just listen to this bad boy. I think it might actually take off. It should not sound like that. And I'm not saying that's happened recently. I have had that since probably like six months into having the console. While I'm playing a game or while I'm watching a film, that's all I hear. Or Hor I was playing Horizon Zero Dawn. And I remember just playing it and I was really into the, uh, um, the story. All of a sudden it got to a really emotional bit. And uh, I was literally on the verge of like listening. I was just here like, wow, this is a really intense story. This is a great plot. What a beautiful... Excuse me, PS4. When uh, Spider-Man's about to give the serum to Aunt May. When a new Joe Exotic song comes on on that Netflix show. I saw it. I have never had something that stresses me out more than my PS4. It's so loud. Sometimes when I turn it off and I go to bed, I can hear it from the other room just trying to calm down. Sort that out, for the love of God. Number eight, and I know this is probably gonna be the most unpopular thing. I loved PS Home. I thought that was great, but again, it was a bit shit for that time. But if you have it as like a next generation Facebook, 
where we have our own avatars, we have our own house, and we have our own venture to walk around. And we can talk to people on our mics, we can communicate via... Maybe the, um, the PlayStation Plus games are available within home as well, and we can play together. A PlayStation Home 2 for the PS5 with the next generation consoles, with the knowledge of social media nowadays, the idea of collecting together, playing together, being together, maybe make it a bit more like Sims, so we have our own house, we can build our own thing. I genuinely feel like a, a PS Home for the PS5 would be incredible, with new technology, with, with incredible graphics. How cool would that be? I don't know about you, but a PS Home for PS5 would be go. I wouldn't change a lot about PS Home, from what I remember anyway, it was just a standard, you walk around, talk to people. I can't remember talking to people that much. I don't think anyone had a mic either. There was uh, homes you could go to, there was different worlds. Expand that, make it more story-based maybe. Make it more user-friendly. Make it more like Facebook in a way. I reckon you've got something good there, a great thing to have. And I feel like people nowadays as well will appreciate PS Home more. I do feel like that was way before its time. I think PS Home now would really make something special. Something that I'm really excited for more than anything is just to see what the look of the PlayStation is. When I saw the PlayStation 4, I was kind of disappointed because I thought it was going to be so much more futuristic. It just seemed a bit simple for me. I do love the design of the new Xbox. I don't know why. It just looks like a gaming tower with a big light at the top. It just screams cool. It just screams futuristic. What would be cool? I know it will never happen. But you remember Drake and Josh where they had that game sphere? What's a game sphere? Only the most sophisticated gaming experience ever created by humans and it's spherical. <laughs> spherical! Oh, mate. Ugh. That's hot. PS4 will never do that, obviously. It's not a sphere, it's not that kind of thing. It'll be the same style as the other PlayStation. It'll probably be as simple as the PS4. But we need something slick. Put some LEDs on it. Put some futuristic shit on it. I'm excited. It's next generation, get us pumped, get us ready to get into the new gen. And uh, yeah, I'm super excited for the PS5. And I will, even though money is tight and we're everyone is struggling at the minute, I really hope I can put the money down on day one and get it straight away. But no guys, I really appreciate you watching. Thanks for watching this week's episode of Chat and Shit in Quarantine. <laughs> uh, if you have any questions, please drop it down. Um, I'm gonna at some point make a Q&A about filmmaking so please if you have any questions hop on my instagram hop on uh, comments down below and i'll make sure to answer every single one of them thank you very much guys and i look forward to seeing you soon